try to answer it as much as possible. Yesterday and the day before, we were talking about prepping your quiz funnel. More specifically, we went through kind of figuring out what your goals are, why you're doing a quiz, um, you know, what is a quiz marketing funnel. Yesterday, we focused more on doing your research, so figuring out why should somebody take your quiz, knowing your audience and their voice, um, knowing your offer, and also knowing what kind of quiz you want to make. So we're going to go a little bit more into that today of um, at this point, you probably will want to know what kind of quiz, what style you're going to use. But as we work through this part, you might have a better idea. So it's okay if it changes. Um, and I will show you how to quickly switch that over in the builder as well when we get there. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first and foremost, when you are making a quiz, of course, you want to know what you're making a quiz on, why you're doing it. But for this part, when we do start getting into the personalities, you're going to dive deeper into who your audience is and how you serve them. So that could be products if you're e-commerce or it could be digital products. It could be um, services if you're coaching. It could be um, trying to think of if there's anything else that falls into this category. But yeah, pretty much all of that. It could be that you have one specific product and you're trying to figure out in what way it can help all these different people. Um, like I said, a lot of this is just really making it conversational and making it that you are providing a solution for a problem that your audience has. It's the number one thing with your quiz. There were a couple um, questions that came in recently in the group about this, and I can't say it enough. It really, really is. You want to present your problem to your audience and you want to let them know that you have that solution for them. And like I said yesterday, I know I said it a lot, but my biggest pro tip for this is make sure you write all of these down on paper first or plan it out on a Word document or spreadsheet, whatever. Then when you jump into the builder, it'll be a lot easier to build out. But because I only have 30 minutes with you guys a day, I'm going to try to do both at the same time. Um, if you haven't already... Uh, I would at least sign up for a free account by now. So that way, either A, you can follow along or B, you can at least get a feel for the software, see if you like it, um, see if it makes sense for you and start building your quiz. Very exciting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started here. Hope everyone's having a good day today. Not even sure what day of the week it is. I think it's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Time's escaping me. Um, anyway, so what I want to start talking about before we get into actual figuring out your personalities is I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what you're going to find when you do get into the builder. So when you first log in for the very first time, you're probably going to end up on this page, which is all of our templates. Um, sorry, not all of ours. We do have our legacy templates available on our website. We are revamping this. So these are going to be our new revamped templates. So you might feel like, oh, this isn't as much as they had before. Those all still exist. And I can link those in the comments later if you guys are interested in looking at those. But these are our revamped templates. So if you have an idea of what you're looking for, these are grouped based off of what your goal is for your quiz. That's why I talk about it a lot. Um, so you can look through all of them. Are you looking to research your audience? All of these are, are um, tailored to that. Are you trying to generate leads? Are these just for fun? So is this an engagement quiz? Are you segmenting? Or are you testing their knowledge? And these are all categorized with that, um, with these in mind, because there's a lot of different reasons why you're going to do a quiz. For the training specifically, we will probably talk a little bit more about generating leads. The last option that you have here is start from scratch. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this. You can choose a template if you think this is along the lines of what you want to do. And then from there, you can always tweak it. All of our templates are customizable, so it's totally up to you what you want your quiz to look like. Or if you have your own quiz in mind, you can start from scratch. When you do start from scratch, it is going to ask you which style of quiz you want to make. Um, I do see some questions coming in, so let me pause real quick on this thought and then go answer these questions. So Lisa, um, you'd be interested in seeing the legacy templates. I will link that in the comments, or if Jessie hops in at some point, I'll have her do that um, if you're listening. And 
Wick, I see your question. Do you recommend using a pre-built template or create your own? It's totally up to you. It really just depends on what your quiz is. The pre-built templates are actually really useful. If you're kind of still unsure, you don't really know what the, you know, the format should be. All of those are built to be are built with our best practices in mind. So it is a good idea if you're kind of still on the fence of what should your quiz look like. And if you find something that's along the same topic, it's a great thing to go with a template. However, if you have a special niche or you don't find a template that necessarily works for what you're trying to accomplish with your goals for your business and for your quiz, then it's probably not a good idea. You'll still want to plan everything out on um, a separate Word doc or paper and then build your quiz right here from scratch. The builder looks exactly the same whether you're using a template or you're building from scratch. The only difference is if you use a template, it's already filled out and you would be editing um, that quiz versus if you're starting from scratch, you'd be building it. Both are really easy to do once you get the hang of it. Um, and the actual building part really doesn't take that long. Um, but hopefully that answers your question. I know it's a little bit vague, but yeah, it really just kind of depends on what your goals are, what your quiz is on. So say you decide to go from scratch, you're on this page, it's asking you which style you wanna make. I do wanna quickly go over again what each of these styles do. So an assessment style quiz is more of testing people's knowledge. So you'll see quizzes like this where it's like, how much do you know about marketing? How much do you know about veganism? How much do you know about um, raising babies? Something like that, right? It'll be testing those knowledge. At the end of the quiz, so each question, I should back up, each question is going to have one correct answer and everything else will be an incorrect answer. So you'll think a lot of this is like those tests we used to take in school, multiple choice. At the end, the result will actually have what that score was. So say you scored a two out of 10, that might be, you don't really know what you're doing or you don't know much about this topic, but that's okay. Um, or if they get like a nine out of 10, it could be like, wow, you really know your stuff, you know exactly what you're doing and so on. Um, a personality style quiz in the middle here, this is gonna be what you see out, out there a lot. So what type of blank are you? Um, what's your brand voice style? Um, can't think well off the top of my head today, but that's kind of along the lines of what we see. All of these are based off of correlation. So what that means is it's pretty much a tallying system. So um, each answer choice gets associated or correlated with a result. As someone is taking the quiz, it's pretty much um, choosing or it's pretty much tallying how with how many of each result someone's choosing. Whichever one they choose the most is the result or personality that they get at the end. Sorry, that might have been a little confusing. I was getting tongue-tied. Um, a scored style quiz is a little bit different, but it's similar to personality. This one's really useful if you're measuring something. Um, although I did do a workshop recently with one of our partners, and she does really great personality style quizzes using scored. But yeah, for the most part, they're going to be measuring something. You're weighing each answer choice a different score, and each result has like um, a range value to it, or you're putting people into specific personalities or segments based off of that score. And as someone's taking the quiz for this one, it is adding up what that score is, whatever that ends up being, it'll tie it to the personality or result that they get, and that's the one that they see at the end. Um, okay, I see a couple questions coming in. So I see, great, thanks. My topic is for gluten-free beginners. Still sussing things out. Is that assessing on which way to go? Hopefully as you get through this, you'll, you'll have more clarity, but definitely post in the group, guys, if you are still looking about strategy. The community has been great at answering questions, and I'll also answer as many questions as I can in there as well. Um, Linda, hi, how are you? Uh, if you use a pre-built template and make a significant change to answers or eliminate a question altogether, how does it affect the pre-built re results? So I'll show you once we're in there. Um, pretty much if you change the answer choice to a question in um, a template, it won't change the correlation. You do still need to go and customize that and make sure it does make sense to the results in your quiz. However, say if you delete one then and then you recreate a new one, same thing, you will have to go into the settings and make sure that you correlate that to a result um, because it will just not tie to anything. 
So there is still a little bit of work when you do a template, but other than that, not really. So I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on personality style quizzes just because this is the one that we talk about the most. Um, and it's really great for lead generation. So whether you are in a template or an existing quiz or a brand new quiz, the layout of this is going to look exactly like this. Um, it's just the content that might be different or that you would edit. Once you're in here, um, you're gonna see your cover page and the whole left side menu goes through the flow of creating your quiz. So um, cover page, then you move into your questions, you have buttons for adding a new question, branching logic if you decide to use that and you have the plan that associates with that. If you are on a free plan, you probably won't see some of these paid features like branching logic. Instead, it'll have like an upgrade button. Um, but just for the sake of showing you what it looks like, I'm gonna do that. Once you're in there, you'll see. Once you're done with your questions, um, they all, each question box actually does have a settings button and this is where you would edit the logic for your quiz. It's the same for any style, it just looks a little bit different. This specific one is correlations because we are in a personality style quiz. If you were doing a scored quiz, this would have spaces for the scores and if it were an assessment style quiz, it would pretty much just ask you which one of these is the correct answer. Once you finish your questions, it moves into the results and this has um, the page for the results here. There's a couple different things with the results. If you decide to go with ours, um, it's just filling this part out. If you decide to redirect, which is something that we can talk about when results happen, um, you can redirect to a landing page where you would fill out the results there. I always still recommend at least labeling each result so you know where your correlations or logic, I should say, goes. Um, and then, there's a button here for redirect results, which we'll talk more about on that day. But for the sake of showing you guys what all of this looks like, once you're done with your results, you can then move into your lead generation, which is where you would connect your email marketing platform and start collecting leads. And this just kind of takes you through that whole process, starting with your opt-in form, connecting the integration, connecting your results. Um, connecting answer choices, ma making sure that the fields map correctly, and then testing that integration to make sure that it works. We will go over all of this. I know I'm kind of breezing through it, but I'm just trying to show you guys what it looks like. So when you do hop in there, you kind of already have a familiarity with it. We also have some other stuff in here like social share settings. Um, try saying that 10 times fast. And in here, this is pretty much just what buttons do you wanna show um, based off of the social media sharing. I feel like we had a question. I don't know if it was during a live or if it was just somewhere in the group of somebody asking if they could share their quiz um, without sharing the actual Facebook post or something like that. But this is where you would do that. So you would add your social share buttons and this is where you would add those in there. You can specify which side, where in the quiz you want it to show, what link you want that, where you, what link you want your quiz to go to, if it's on a landing page, the image, heading, and this part's pretty nifty if you have a special quiz that talks about something else. In general, when you share your quiz, somebody shares that result, it's gonna say, I got you know, whatever result for this quiz, but you can change it to say something like, um, my design style is, and then the result for whatever that quiz is. Make sure you click save wherever it has a save button, that's super important. And the last part here is conversion tracking. This is um, for Google Analytics or Facebook Pixels if you decide to do a Facebook ad. Um, this is all available in here, I believe, starting on the growth plan. So that's kind of a really quick overview of the builder. I know I mentioned that if you decide to switch um, your quiz style, you can actually do that right from here. So say you start on a personality style quiz and you're like, you know what, this isn't making sense. I actually need to do a scored quiz. You can go all the way down here, change quiz type and just easily switch to that type. It will, want, it will ask you to confirm that this is what you wanna do. So you do have to type switch in that box. And um, if you do decide to do this, it will remove all of your, if it was correlations or if it was scored and you're going wherever, it will remove all of that logic. So you will have to redo that. So make sure that you're really sure that you wanna do that switch. Oh, hi, Lisa. Okay, so you were wondering how we can make our quizzes shareable if we post the original quiz 
in a private Facebook group. Awesome. I'm glad that you mentioned that today. So if we go back into social share settings, this is exactly what I was talking about, where um, you can say, I want it to show in the results page, below the description, above the description, um, or above the image. I want it on the left or right side. This is how they can share the quiz if you share it in a Facebook group, but you don't want to share that Facebook post. You just want to share the quiz. Um, and this is where you would do that. Hopefully that answers your question. Created quizzes can be cloned, yes. And I can show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, another thing that I will cover as we go through here, there's a couple different buttons that you'll see up here. This one is gonna be a preview button. So if you wanna see what your quiz looks like without affecting the analytics, this is also what the link that you'll wanna to share to people. If you're like, hey, can you test out my quiz just to make sure you get the right result or just to see what it looks like, I wanna see what you think. Save and exit is just gonna save your um, latest actions and changes within the builder. So this will not publish live. Anytime you make changes and your quiz is already up and you know running on your website or in an ad or anything like that and you make a change, you wanna make sure you hit the publish button because this will push your changes live. This is a super important button just because say you edit your lead generation settings or you know you correlate a result differently, it's gonna matter. So you wanna make sure that you publish right here. Gonna ask you to publish changes and that's kind of a quick overview once you get to here this is all your promotion options and we have a few different ways you can promote your quiz where you send a live link embed that code an announcement bar pop-up or a Facebook ad awesome so now that we have kind of seen the layout of what a quiz looks like, how we would build it. The first thing that you want to do when you're actually strategizing your quiz is figure out what your personalities are. How would you group your audience? Um, this matters, of course, because this is a word that you're going to hear me say a lot. This is what your segments are going to end up being inside your email marketing system when you send those emails to those people. Um, the reason why personalities are important is because it's really personalizing the experience for your audience. And now you know exactly how to talk to those people. You know what their wants are and what their needs are. And you know what services or what products are right for them. A lot of times you're going to hear people say this when they're creating a quiz, you want to work backwards. So you want to figure out what your personalities are before you figure out everything else. You want, before you figure out your quiz title, your um, questions, and so on. Figuring out your personalities really depends on, um, it really depends on what your quiz is going to be about, what your offers are, your products are what your goals are. That's why I made you guys do all of that the past two days. And it really kind of sets the tone for everything else. So when you are doing a personalities and segments, I'm not really going to write anything super special in here because I don't have an example for you guys. I realized that like five minutes before I started that I probably should have had an example quiz. So after today's call, I'm going to try to come up with a quiz that I can use for an example for you guys. So as I go through this process of creating something, you have something to, um, to compare it to or kind of use for your own quiz. But I'm just going to make some notes so you can actually see it on screen so we can walk through this together since we are both doing it from scratch. Um, so a couple things that you might use for your personalities are, oh, if I could type, that'd be awesome. Pain points. This probably looks really tiny, huh? You might use pain points for your personalities. Um, that means, you know, like I said, presenting the problem that you have a solution for. So what are those pain points? This depends, of course, on what your niche is. So, you know, are you, um, are you a coach for new entrepreneurs? What are some pain points that people have when they're a new entrepreneur? Is it money? Is it time? Um, is it, you know, resources? Stuff like that. When you're thinking of your pain points, this can easily turn into your personalities. This can easily turn into your segments, um, but it just kind of depends, like I said, on what you want to use that for. Um, Lisa, I see your question. Sorry, I totally didn't see it real quick, but do you recommend calling the quizzes we make a quiz? Do you think that deters people from engaging with them? Um, 
I'm not really sure what you mean by that. But you do want to, if you're talking about in the quiz title, I would say, no, you, you don't want to say it, but you will probably say it in your tagline. Clarify that because I'm not entirely sure. But I can also get back to you in the comments if I have a better answer later. Um, so pain points. Another thing that I've seen people do with their personalities is use behaviors. I'm going to go back to the new entrepreneur example since that's the first thing that popped into my head. What are some behaviors that people have when they are a new entrepreneur? Maybe they are not organized. Maybe they um, don't, you know, know how to. Maybe they don't know how to do tech savvy things. Sorry, I just made that up. But yeah, maybe it's tech savvy. Maybe they don't know how to create a business model. Maybe they don't know how to, um, I'm trying to think of some good things, but you guys kind of get the gist of what I'm saying with behavior. So it could be that. These can also easily turn into your personalities, turn into your segments. It really just depends. Another thing that I've seen people do is doing, if you're e-commerce, this is specific to that, but product types and categories. So this could be like product type one, product type two, product type three, et cetera. And what that kind of means um, is putting your people into personalities and, and recommending products based off of that personality. So my favorite one ever is Claire's. They're an earring store. They have a quiz with us and their personalities are based off of, you know, styles of like bohemian, um, classic, glam. I can't really remember the rest of them, but it was along that style. And then whenever people got that result, they would then send them to the page that had earrings that had to do with that specific style. So all the boho earrings, all the glam earrings and so on. Um, another thing that I've seen people do is levels of expertise. So what that means is, um, by the way, guys, it looks like I have five minutes coming from here, but I'm not done yet. So this might run a little bit over. I'm sorry if you do have to run. Um, I want to make sure that I get through all the info. So you might do yours off of levels of expertise. So this usually means like, you know, are you a beginner, intermediate, or kind of higher intermediate, or do you know exactly what you're doing? This is really useful, I think, in maybe service-based or coaching places where you know you're trying to figure out like does this person need one-on-one -on -one done for you do they need maybe just resources that I can send to them give them a low ticket offer um, do they need like an actual strategy call where are they at another thing that you might do your personalities off of is stage of their journey this is, I'm going to tie it back to new entrepreneurs, but this could be something in that example where it's like, did they wake up yesterday and say, I'm going to start a business. It's happening now. Um, have they been working on this for a couple years? Have they been working on this for 10 years? Um, you know, are they trying to rebrand? What stage are they at? Okay. So these are the ty different types of ways you can figure out what your personalities are based off of these. Like I said, depends on your business, depends on what your offers are. Um, but hopefully this helps you figure out what that is. I would focus on one just because, you know, if you try to mix it up too much, it might get a little bit jumbled. Lisa, I see your question. So does a word quiz scare people away because they have a fear of taking quizzes? In my experience, I haven't really seen anybody not take a quiz because it said quiz. Um, I would just probably make sure that it says personality quiz in there or letting them know like, hey, when you take this quiz, you're going to get this type of value from it. Um, not those exact words, but insert that there. When you are figuring out your personalities, um, they do become the segments. So what I mean by that is say you have four personalities, you would then have four segments. I wouldn't try to break away from what that number is just because you don't want to have like say six segments for four personalities. It wouldn't make much sense. Um, but if it does make sense in your business, um, I wouldn't argue, but that's kind of what I would recommend is making sure you stick with the same number of personalities, results, and segments. With this, we do usually recommend four to six personality types. Wow, I can't type today. 
Um, the most that I've seen is really successful is keeping it to four, but it's totally up to you, of course. Um, I have seen other people do more than that. It really just depends. But if you are looking for a best practice type of thing, I would say stick between four and six. It also makes your lives a lot easier because um, when we get to this part, each segment is going to have their own series. So you're going to want to make sure that you have special series for those people and then making sure that everything's clean and ready to go. So if you were to have like 12 of these, it might be harder to keep track of. Another thing that you want for these, um, when you are thinking of what your personalities are, a huge one that I've been saying a lot, I know, is make sure that it stays positive. Um, and what I mean by that is there's a lot of different um, quizzes out there that are maybe touching on, say, levels of expertise. You don't want to tell somebody like, hey, you have no idea what you're doing. You might tell them something like, hey, you are still just figuring it out, but you're going to get there and here's how I can help you and here's what you can do to get to that spot. Um, quizzes that do not have a positive tone or have a negative tone, I should say, tend to not get shared and people tend to drop off faster because no one wants to be um, told that they're not doing as good as they could be. Um, but if you have something where it's like, hey, like I can help you get through this, usually if it has a more positive tone, even if it may have somewhat of a negative connotation, they usually are willing to move forward. Another thing that you want um, your personalities to be because these are turning into your results are you want them to be shareable. So it kind of goes back into positive. You want people to feel comfortable sharing it. You want them to be like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to share the quiz because like I showed you in that one spot when they do share their result, it'll say I got X result on this quiz. You want these to be concise. Um, and what I mean by that is you just want each of your results to be very clear. You want it to have a clear purpose and you want it to be clear who you're talking to. Um, the big thing with quizzes that I've found in the past few years that I've been here is people love them because it's kind of either confirming something you already know about yourself or you're discovering something that you want to know about yourself. So you want it to be really clear. I think one of the biggest horror stories I've heard people say when they're like, my quiz isn't working, is they'll have people with feedback say like, well, they said it, they got this result and it had nothing to do with them. It just like wasn't correct. So that's something that you don't want to have with your quiz. You want to make sure that you have a really clear and concise personality for each person in your audience. Another thing um, that I would recommend with these, of course, is make sure they are relevant. And this is these four things, positive, shareable, concise, and relevant, are actually going to matter throughout your whole quiz. You want each question to relate to these um, or have these qualities. You want each answer choice. You want each, um, not each, but you want your title and your tagline and all, everything to have to do with positive, shareable, concise, and relevancy. If it is relevant, then of course people will automatically connect to it and they'll be like, okay, this has something to do with that. What I mean by this is um, there is some fun twists you can do to a quiz. Like I did see one a couple years back that was like, what Hogwarts house is your um, business, which I thought was a super cute quiz, but you are going to um, eliminate, start eliminating people who are like, I hate Harry Potter, which would be really sad. Um, but you're going to find those people where they're like, oh, like, I don't like Harry Potter at all. So I'm not going to take this quiz. So in those instances, even though like you will come across people, unless your audience is really, really, really into Harry Potter, you might not want to use that as a topic for your quiz or the theme of your quiz, just because one, it's not necessarily relevant. You don't totally need it. Um, and two, you're going to eliminate those people who don't identify with liking Harry Potter. Um, I see a couple good questions in here. I see what's the ideal number of personalities. Okay, there. Yeah, I did write it in there. Four to six personality types. Um, I recommend four. I've always worked with four. It's super like, I just like, like that it's a lot easier and you stick with four and you can do it based off of pain points, behaviors, product types, levels of expertise and stages. It's super easy to do with four. That's just my own opinion. Um, do you name each personality as in if they're sharing, do they identify themselves with being something like healthy Helen or beginning Bridget? Yes and no. Um, I wouldn't give it like a specific person name just because 
I mean, this might be personal preference, but if I got healthy Helen, I might be like, well, my name's not Helen. Um, but yes, you do want to name your results. And what I mean by that is, for example, um, let me think of something that I have. Say you're doing one on brand voice style, maybe you would do um, result one is, you know, clever, quirky, witty, something like that. That's what your name for that result is. Maybe the next one is very sophisticated, um, eloquent, slow talking, something like that. Result three, it could be, um, you know, loud, um, outgoing, etc. And then four would be something like timid, quiet, kind of very like calculative, something like that. So that's kind of what I mean by naming your results um, and your personalities rather than giving them like um, an actual like person name or something like that. So say you were trying to do something like with healthiness, depending on what that quiz is, you could probably say is something like, um, you know, you are very um, green centered, you love eating your greens, or maybe you could say something like you really care about your body. So I'm calling you um, just, I can't think of the top of my head, but hopefully that <laughs> helps. And if you are talking about something like beginning, like someone's a beginner, you could just say like, hey, like you're just starting out. So you're in the beginning stages. Um, Wick, I'd love to know a little bit more about what you're thinking about your quiz so I can help answer your question a little bit better, but I'm really bad at coming up with stuff on the spot. So that's kind of everything with this, with results and personalities. I would start off with figuring out how you want to figure out those personalities. Do you want to use pain points? Do you want to use behaviors? Are you e-commerce? Do you want to do product types or categories, levels of expertise, or maybe stages of the journey? This is not limited to just these specific ways you can do it. There's a ton of different ways. There's not one way to do a quiz. Um, if you guys have any other ideas, I'd love to hear it. I think that letting us know what else is out there is a huge thing for helping people out because it might help someone else in the community out. But these are the ones that I've seen work really well. Um, and then of course, four to six personality types. I usually like to work with four. I usually recommend people work with four. And then, of course, this is going to go throughout your quiz, but you want everything to be positive, shareable, concise, and relevant. Um, so I will take any last minute questions. If you guys have any in the comments, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. But so far, what we've done is we prepped our quiz funnel. We figured out why we wanted to take our quiz and we figured out who we're doing this quiz for. Sorry, there's a fly. Um, today, we talked about personalities and how to figure those out. These will become your results and they will become your segments when you put them into your email marketing platform. Tomorrow, when we hop in, we are going to go back into the builder and I'm going to start going through title and tagline. Um, I do have a ton of info for this as I'm looking through my notes. So I'm probably going to try to use the whole time as much as I can to cover all of that information. Um, any questions, of course, that I don't get to, I will get back to in the comments or try to do it live in the next day. Awesome. And of course, if you have any questions that you think of later, feel free to put it in the comments um, and I will see you guys tomorrow.